Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here we'll be doing this series, but let me tell you guys that this right here is unfortunately not telescoping. Even though it does look like one, but seriously, it's not. Man. Ugh. Anyway, as always, please pause the video and try this first. Okay, hopefully you guys have the time to try it. And now let me tell you guys that this right here is equal to 3 over 4 ln2 and then minus pi over 8 like this. A pretty crazy looking answer, right? <laughs> anyway, I got this question from Daily Math in his new book. So go ahead and check that out. I will have the link in the description for your convenience. Now, let's talk about how we can actually approach this. <sighs> this is not telescoping. Oh well, don't worry. Just think, keep this in mind. Sometimes when we have summations, maybe its best friend is integration. So let's look at this right here. 1 over 4 and minus 1. Can we think about integral so that that will result as 1 over 4 and minus 1? Hmm. We want to have the 4 and minus 1 in the denominator. And if we integrate, x to some power, the power will end up in the denominator, right? So let's look at the integral. And let me just integrate x to the 4n, but I will actually have to put down minus 2. Because when we integrate this, I will have to add 1. So that will actually produce the 4n minus 1 for us, right? And then divided by the new power, we will end up with the 4n minus 1 on the bottom. But I don't want to see any more x. It's okay, let's just go ahead and integrate this guy from 0 to 1, and you will not see any more x. This will result you 1 over 4 minus 1, which is very nice. Then we are going to do the same thing for the second one, which is the 1 over 4n, and that's a minus in between, so we have minus and integral from 0 to 1. For this situation, we will integrate x to the 4n by minus 1. I don't know why I did that, but I think that was kind of cool, but anyway. Because if you add 1 to the power, you actually just have 4n, and then divide it by the 4n, so you end up with that, dx. Right? Good. Now, <laughs> we have the integrals in the summation now. For the good or for the bad, uh, we'll see. So, let's still go ahead and put down the integral, I mean the summation, from 1 to infinity, and everything inside. Here is the deal. Sometimes we can switch the order of integration and also the summation. And in his book, right, by Daily Math, he talked about when you can actually do that. It's called the Dominant Convergence Theorem. And he also gives an example on when you cannot do so. So go ahead and check that out. I will leave that to you guys. But in this case here, I will tell you we can actually switch it. And that will actually be really nice. So have a look here. Both of the integrals are going from 0 to 1. So I will just put on one of the integral symbol from 0 to 1. And then we'll do the summation of this. So let's put down the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity. For this part though, you see we have x to the 4n minus 2. Let's play around with the exponent. For this, I will write it as x to the 4th power and then raised to the nth power. So that will give us the x to the 4n. That's good. Then, for the minus 2, I will just put down 1 over x squared like this. So this will still be that right, the summation. So that will be nice. And you will see this is actually very nice because it's actually the best friend situation, namely geometry series. Similarly, I will just put a minus and we'll do the sum of this guy. So let me just write it down again so we can focus on this study better. So sum goes from 1 to infinity. For this, I will put it as x to the fourth power raised to the nth power, but then we have to divided by x, so I'll just put down 1 over x to the first power in the front, like that. Everything is still inside of the integral, so I have to put the parentheses and then dx that, right? Now, this right here, again, it's a best friend situation that actually converge because x is just from 0 to 1, right? So the input right here converge. I mean, the input right here, <laughs> it's a nice number. x to the fourth power is less than uh, 1. So, we are going to just continue. Here we have the integral from 0 to 1. But for this situation, we still have the 1 over x to the second power in the front. Times, well, go ahead and do this. I will put down n is equal to 1 right here. So the first term is going to be x 
to the 4 times 1 power, right? And then divided by 1 minus x to the 4 power, like that. And that's how you can actually work out the infinite geometry series. Again, it's just the first term on the top divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So that's pretty much the idea, right? Similarly, we'll be doing the same thing for the second part. We have to minus. And for this right here, we will have the 1 over n in the 1 over x in the front. And for this part, again, the first term is you put a 1 right here. So we have x to the fourth power. Perhaps I should put a parenthesis to the first power like this, even though they are equivalent, but it's, yeah, it's nicer this way. Divided by 1 minus the common ratio, namely x to the fourth power, like that. And yeah, that's the idea, dx. So in fact, you can see that we turn the summation question into a <laughs> integral question. That's very nice, huh? And now, of course, we can just integrate this guy. So we are going to simplify this a little bit. So I'm just write down everything black now. This right here is equal to the integral going from 0 to 1. OK, let's do this in your head. This right here is going to give us x squared on the top. This right here is going to give us x to a third power on the top, right? And then both of them have the same denominator. So I will write it as over 1 minus x to a fourth power for the denominator. Again, this is x squared minus x to the third power like this, dx that. <laughs> so we just have to do this integral. And we can factor this a little bit. Factor this, we get 1 minus x times 1 plus x times 1 plus x squared. And on the top, we can factor out an x squared. So I'll we'll factor out the x squared, and then we have 1 minus x. And the best part about this is that the 1 minus x cancel. So we actually just have that part. And that's the uh, integral from 0 to 1. On the top is x squared over the bottom is 1 minus x, 1 plus x, sorry, and then times 1 plus x squared dx. And this is like a question I can totally put on my, my calculus to final exam and see the partial fraction from the students and all that stuff, right? So that's the idea. Well, I'm just going to skip the partial fraction part in this video, right? Because I think you guys know how to do partial fractions. If you guys want to request, just, just request in the, on the bottom and all that stuff. All right, so you can factor out the 1 half, and that's very nice. Uh, integrate this from 0 to 1. 1, plus, 1 over 1 plus x. Plus split this, we get x over 1 plus x squared. And lastly, we have to minus 1 over 1 plus x squared, like this. Right? So now, we will do a lot of things in your head. We have that 1 half all the way in the front. Here is the first thing that we're doing in your head. Integrating 1 over 1 plus x, we get ln of 1 plus x. Don't need absolute void because just go from 0 to 1. Putting 1 into the ln of 1 plus x, so you get ln 2. That's it, right? And then if you're putting 0 ln 1, it's going to be 0, so that's good. Now for this one, well, we have the plus 1 half, so I'll just put on the plus this 1 half here. You can do u sub, and then you will end up with 1 half ln. And you will have the denominator as the in input. Namely, 1 plus x squared, and then you're putting 1. 1 plus 1 squared, you get 2. And then when you're putting 0, again, L and 1 will be 0. So that's the second part. And lastly, when you integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared, you get the inverse tangent. And if you're putting 1, you get uh, inverse tangent of 1, which is pi over 4. When you're putting 0, you get 0. So here we will have to minus, and again, distribute the 1 half you end up with the pi over 4 from this integral, right? So that's pretty much it. And now have a look. 1 half plus 1 fourth, both of them have the ln 2. So all, all these two terms give us 3 over 4. And we have the ln 2. Lastly, minus pi over 8. Like this, right? Very, very good. So hopefully you guys all like this video. If you enjoyed this question, I think you will like the book as well. Go ahead and check that out. The link will be in the description. And thanks to Daily Math for, you know, introducing me to his book. I enjoyed it very much, right? So as always, that's it.